What's up y'all, Alvin here. This is Question and Answer, Season 3, Episode 2. <laughs> what you doing with your wrist? No. Uh. All right, so I was a little bit late on making the call out, but still got quite a few questions, so let's get into it. First up is, what's your opinion on using wrist during fly casting? And that was is from uh, Vulture Premium. Um, so the wrist thing is another one of those sort of controversial fly fishing subjects, and a lot of people say you don't use the wrist. Uh, I actually took a fly casting instructor's course like 20 years ago from Joan Wolf, and she, before she taught us how to be casting instructors, she actually taught us how to cast. Everybody there had been casting for years, but it was nice to have somebody just kind of break it down and explain how all the different parts of the cast work. And one of the things she mentioned was that you actually do use your wrist. You're not casting with a totally stiff wrist. There's just a little bit of a wrist movement right there, boom, at the end of the stroke, and then on the forward cast, and then on the back cast, you move your wrist from here to here on the backstroke. So as you can see, not a lot of wrist movement, but there is some wrist movement. I think the thing that causes people problems with the wrist is when they bend the wrist back on the back cast. So your wrist should never go beyond being straight. If you're bending your wrist back on the back cast, you're dropping your rod tip on the back cast and you're opening up your loop. So there is some wrist, but it's just a small amount of wrist at just the right time. Thanks for the question. <laughs> and nice handle, Vulture Premium. <laughs> question from Jay, and the question is, tropical or cold water lines, or when you switch between them here in Texas? So I do have some, I would say, not really cold water lines, because they don't make a whole lot of cold water lines for saltwater fishing. And that's where I usually do most of my switching. I tend to use the same lines year round for freshwater fishing. You know, in the wintertime, we'll use some sinking or sink tip lines. In the summer, we use floating lines. So we don't really switch between the types of lines so much during the freshwater season. Saltwater season, I do on occasion fish with some, you know, non-tropical or some, you know, more cold water lines for saltwater, but typically I don't fish that much during the winter. So I tend to leave my, you know, eight weight warm water lines, eight weight, nine weight, 10 weight warm water lines on year round. If I get out occasionally and I'm having issues with it, there's no problem to just, you know, make a cast and, you know, stretch the line out. And I haven't really noticed a whole lot of problems with my warm water lines fishing during the cooler months. I hope that helps. Thanks for the question. Okay, CG Calhoun wants to know, when fishing on a river, do you anchor very often to fish specific spots you want to target? If so, what's your favorite kind of anchor to use? Now, I do have an anchor system for 
my Hog Island boat, but I've never put it on. I know people who fish the rivers with anchors and, you know, um, for the trout fishing that our guides do on the Guadalupe, an anchor is pretty much invaluable, but I tend to just cover water. So I'll uh, plan on fishing, you know, six, eight, even 10 miles of river. And unless we're fishing during the winter, and that's the one time when we will want to stop and fish an area over and over again, but typically what I'll do is I'll fish a hole, and if I wanted to hit it again, I'll just row back up to the top, and we usually drift through. So if there's current, uh, I don't really worry so much about stopping. I'll just fish my way through, row back up. If it's faster water, you know, I'm a jet boat, I got an engine, so I can just fish through, fire the engine up, put back up to the top, and fish through again. I do like the idea of an anchor, and I have had anchors on rafts and drift boats, but I've never really put one on my jet boat for fishing the river. I keep thinking about it though. I definitely think it's a good thing to have, but I don't have one. <laughs> Thanks for the question. All right, this is from my buddy, Brian Prokaski. I hope I'm saying that right. I always mess it up. Anyway, what are must do's when storing reels and other equipment between trips? I know to back the drag off anything else. So that back in the drag thing off, if you don't know that, if you're storing your reel, turn the drag all the way off. I've actually ruined the drag on a really nice saltwater reel. Uh, the real people, the manufacturer will not be named here. That's my fault because it says explicitly in the instructions to back the drag off when you're not using the reel. You don't want those materials compressed together. It's more of an issue on some reels than others, but that's definitely the one thing you want to do. Another thing is it's probably not a bad idea to clean your line and dry your line and store it someplace where it's not going to be exposed to sun or heat because, you know, the fly line is plastic. You know, the other thing is you probably want to rinse your gear off, you know, rinse your reel off with fresh water, rinse your rod off with fresh water, and make sure everything is dry before you store it. So don't put your rod in a wet rod sock or a wet rod in a rod sock. Put it in the tube and seal it up tight. I've seen some really nasty mold grow on the cork, even the windings for the guides and, you know, the your rod sock. All that stuff is just really bad if you leave it wet inside the tube. So that's the things that I would think about when I'm storing my gear for the winter or for the summer or for whatever. Anyway, thanks for the question, Brian. Kyle Purnell, thanks for your question. Basically the same question as uh, Brian's. I hope I covered both of you guys' questions. And uh, yes, the fishing has been good down here lately. <laughs> Flowers. PV Photos says, I've got a 14 foot aluminum John boat. They're converted into a polling skiff. He's got everything ready to go, platform, all that. And the last step is a push pole. And he says, everything I've read and looked at has led me to the Carbon Marine Traveler Pole. Any recommendations or reviews for a pole in North Carolina shallow waters? So I'm assuming the waters around North Carolina are similar to what we have here in Texas. And really, I haven't seen any bad push poles. I know that the carbon marine stuff is really great. I have uh, several carbon marine tiller extensions on our jet boats, and everybody loves the carbon marine stuff. If you need something that you can break down and store or break down and travel with, that's probably going to be your best bet because a lot of the other manufacturers, not that I know of, uh, make travel style poles. So I think you'll be good with anything from Carbon Marine. And uh, if not, you know, I guess you can blame it on me. <laughs> nah, you'll be happy with that Carbon Marine pole. Okay. So as always, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know, give it a thumbs up. It'd be cool to subscribe to the channel, all that YouTube stuff. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully you're having a great day. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, good luck on the water.